Hello everybody, just by Tech Geeks here. Today's lecture series will focus on the topic of PCR, polymerase chain reaction. This is a very commonly used technique in research and diagnostic studies. An introduction. PCR or polymerase chain reaction is a molecular technique that employs polymerase, an enzyme, to amplify a particular strand of DNA or RNA. This technique enables us to obtain around millions to billions of copies of a particular gene of interest. This is basically an in vitro technique where the process takes place inside a PCR tube rather than in a cell or organism. A small history on this technique. It was developed by Carrie B. Mullis, who was an American biochemist in the year 1983, and he won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for this technique in the year 1993. The first tag polymerase used was in the year 1986, and the first RT-PCR was developed in the year 1991. Before we jump into the details, we need to know what exactly DNA or RNA is. DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid is a hereditary material which is seen in mostly all organisms except for some viruses, which do contain RNA as the nucleic material. As the name suggests, it is seen in the nucleus but also in the mitochondria. When we see the structure as proposed by Watson and Crick, it is made up of a phosphate sugar backbone and contains nucleotide bases like adenine, guanine, thymine and cytosine. The rule is that A always binds with C and G always with C. And these bonds are usually hydrogen bonds, 2 in the case of A and T, 3 in the case of G and C. DNA is a polynucleotide which is like a compilation of many many nucleotides together. So what exactly is a gene? A gene is a sequence of nucleotides in DNA or RNA that encodes the synthesis of a gene product, either RNA or protein. So genes are made up of DNA or RNA. It is the basic physical and functional unit of heredity. The principle. The principle behind this technique involves three main steps, so as to obtain millions to billions of copies of the particular gene of interest. They are denaturation and healing, and elongation. This is a depiction of how the process would continue, one being denaturation, two being the step of annealing and three being the step of elongation. The PCR process requires some components so as to amplify our gene of interest. It includes a template DNA or RNA molecule which is nothing but our gene of interest. Primers Primers are short strands of sequences used to identify the start of our denatured DNA strand. The enzyme used is usually a polymerase so as to aid in elongation of the new strand after primer binding. The common polymerase used is stack polymerase which is obtained from the bacterium thermus aquaticus. DNTPs are the nucleotides used by TAC during elongation. The buffer is another important which gives the ideal temperature for the process to occur. The buffer may or may not contain few additional substances which aids in proper PCR process. The working. All the components are mixed accordingly to the protocol which are particular to the type of PCR being performed. They are taken in PCR tubes. Here given below is an example of the concentration of components used in a particular PCR reaction. They are then placed in thermocycler for the PCR process to occur. In a normal PCR process, the first step of the process is denaturation of the double strand DNA into a single strand molecule. This involves the breaking of the hydrogen bonds between the bases. This step usually takes place at a temperature between 94 degrees Celsius and 96 degrees Celsius and for a duration of 15 seconds to 1 minute. In this step, a factor called the melting temperature is very much important. 
It is the temperature at which 50% of the oligos and its perfect complement are in duplex. The formula for calculating the melting temperature is given below. Tm is equal to 4 times the sum of G and C plus 2 times the sum of A and T. This would be very much important in calculating the annealing temperature. The second step involves the process of annealing where the primers go and attach to the single strand DNA molecule at the correct position adjacent to or before the gene of interest. This step usually takes place at a temperature between 48 degrees Celsius and 72 degrees Celsius and for a duration of about 30 seconds to 2 minutes. The annealing temperature is determined to increase the probability of the primer binding. It is 5 to 10 degrees Celsius less than that of the melting temperature. This annealing temperature also depends on the type of primer pair used. The final step is actually the elongation of the new strand. TAC polymerase binds to the primers and elongates the new strand using the DNTPs available. During synthesis, it moves from the 5' prime to the 3' prime direction. This step usually takes place at a temperature of 72 degrees Celsius and for a duration of 1.5 to 5 minutes, depending on the length of our gene. This is the temperature chosen because TAC polymerase activity is at its highest. For the first cycle, there is around 2 strands produced and the strands increase based on the power of 2. For the first cycle, we obtain 2 copies. Second cycle, it's 4 copies and it goes on. Usually, 30 to 45 cycles are considered for good amplification numbers. This is an example of a thermocycler program. After amplification, the product is checked on a gel so as to verify its size. This is a gel electrophoresis picture of a particular gene after amplification. We could see it being compared to a marker ladder. The detailed explanation of gel electrophoresis would be dealt in future lectures, so stay tuned. Application The technique has a wide range of applications in many fields of study, like molecular biology, microbiology, genetic studies, diagnostic and forensic sciences. It aids in detection of infectious agents and in cancer, single point mutations and variations, diseases like Huntington's chorea, cystic fibrosis, etc. Prenatal sex and diseases could also be detected using this technique. It's also employed in genotyping and sequencing, DNA fingerprinting, and gene expression analysis. This is just an overview of all the possible ways or places where PCR is employed and applied. Thank you so much for listening.